So in this video, we're going to find the concentration of holes. And first, I just want to make a, a note on what the units of N and P are. So they're just the number of electrons or the number of holes uh, per volume. So in semiconductors, we generally don't know what volume it is we're working with ahead of time. Uh, that's determined by our device. But properties like conductivity, mobility, things that we're interested in are determined independently of the volume. So we are interested in the concentration, not the total number necessarily. So the concentration is, is what's most important to us. So in this video, we're going to find the concentration of holes. So it's basically identical to finding the concentration of electrons. You just integrate the density of states of a function, except this time it's in the valence band, multiplied by the probability of finding a hole, uh, F, let's call that uh, Fp of E, uh, multiply times dE. And you might ask, well, why, why are you using P here instead of H? Um, the most obvious reason I can think of is that H is already taken by Planck's constant. Um, so P is just commonly used for, uh, for semiconductors as notation for the, for the holes. Now, there's a couple subtleties here that make this uh, a little more challenging, and that's that um, FP of E uh, is 1 minus the uh, Fermi function we derived previously. And that's because the Fermi function, f of e, is the probability of finding an electron. And so it goes to 1 half at the Fermi energy. Goes to 1 half. So we're not interested in the probability of finding an electron. We're interested in the probability of not finding an electron, the probability of finding a hole. Uh, which is just 1 minus the probability of finding an electron. And that's just from basic probability. The probability of something not happening is 1 minus the probability of it happening. Uh, and similarly, the density of states function, instead of, de instead of increasing with increasing energy like it did before, so we said it followed this square root dependence where it's the square root of energy, uh, the density of states function actually increases with decreasing energy. So in the if we draw out our band diagram again, EC and EV, if we draw what the density of states function looked like on the top, it was sort of this uh, square root increasing uh, dependent on the square root of delta or square root of E minus EC or the square root of delta E. Uh, but this was the energy of electrons. Now the energy of holes goes something like this. It's proportional to EV minus the energy. And that's because holes very near the top of the valence band, uh, they don't have very much energy relative to, um, relative to where they started out. So an electron up here, say, way above the conduction band, has a lot of energy. It's got, it's got this much kinetic energy. Uh, delta E. It's got this much energy to kind of move around. Similarly, holes energies are measured from the bottom of the valence band. They're measured in this way. So increasing energy for holes is down. And increasing energy for electrons is up. So this is sort of a, a confusion. Uh, it's just I, I was I was very confused about it even until three quarters of the way through my semiconductor physics course. Um, so band diagrams are drawn such that the electron energy increases as you go up, but the whole energy increases as you go down. So we kind of have to flip things a bit, and we flip basically everything. So the Fermi function has to be flipped. So now it actually looks like this because that's 1 minus the Fermi function f of e, 1 minus the probability of finding an electron. So if we make those changes, uh, they're, they're not, not too dramatic. We perform the integral kind of sort of upside down. 
So from the valence band energy to minus infinity instead of from the valence band energy to infinity. And the integral is, again, very, very similar to the integral for electrons. So it's just equal to GV of E, which is 4 pi times twice the effective mass of holes to the 3 halves divided by H cubed times the square root of EV minus E. And then, and then that's all multiplied by our Fermi function, or 1 minus our Fermi function. Uh, 1 minus 1 over 1 plus e to the e minus ef uh, over kt. And you might expect d. And you might expect, again, that this integral can't actually be evaluated. Uh, and you'd be right, because it's basically the same integral that we had before. So we're actually going to make the approximation that, well, uh, here, this term, e minus e to the e minus ef, or if we rewrite 1 minus this, it's just 1 over 1 plus e to the ef minus e uh, over kt. We're just going to assume that this term is much, much larger than 1. And that's a valid, that's generally a valid assumption, so that we can actually perform this integral. And so once we do the integral, we'll get that p is equal to uh, basically the same expression that we had before, uh, 2 times 2 pi times the effective mass of the whole uh, times kt divided by h squared to the 3 halves times e to the, and now we have to be kind of careful, um, e to the minus EF minus EV divided by KT. And you might guess, again, well, all these constants are kind of ugly, so I just want to group them all into one. Uh, so I'm just going to say that P is equal to NV, or the effective density of states in the valence band, times e to the negative EF minus EV over kt. And so this is our final expression for the number of holes. And this is just evaluated at a specific Fermi energy, at a specific temperature. It's just a number. Uh, and at t equals 300 Kelvin, the number of holes is actually 1.5 times 10 to the 10 uh, per cubic centimeter. And uh, I'm sorry about this if you haven't seen it before. In semiconductor physics, everything is done in units of centimeters. Uh, and that does take some getting used to, but it strengthens your, your engineering SI muscles. Uh, so get used to it, sorry. Um, and similarly, the electron concentration at three, t equals 300k is also 1.5 times 10 to the 10 per centimeter cubed. And this actually makes sense. So we would expect that the electron concentration and the whole concentration are the same, because we said that that's the way that they're created. An electron jumps into the conduction band and leaves behind a hole. So every electron has to come from this generation process, uh, in intrinsic semiconductors at least. And so we'd expect the number of electrons and the number of holes after you carry out this integral to be the same. You could also just make a conservation of charge argument. Uh, so once you know the number of electrons, at least in equilibrium, uh, you also know the number of holes. And for an intrinsic semiconductor, the ones that we are, we've been dealing with up to this point where we're not adding anything to them, these numbers are the same at equilibrium. And this is just a really good number to remember, uh, 1.5 times 10 to the 10, because it's going to come up a lot. Uh, and it comes up so much that we've, we've given it its own name. This is the intrinsic uh, number of carriers in the semiconductor per cubic centimeter, 1.5 times 10 to the 10, Ni. Uh, so this is known as the intrinsic semiconductor charge carrier concentration. And we say intrinsic because this semiconductor hasn't had anything added to it yet. Uh, we'll get to that in the, next, in the next video on how do we actually change these concentrations. And so Ni, uh, as you might guess, is a very strong function of temperature. So it's got this t to the 3 halves dependence, and it's got this e to the minus 1 over kt dependence. So 
its dependence on temperature is pretty ugly as far as functions go. And it's important to always keep that in the back of your head. So the intrinsic carrier concentration is a strong, strong function of temperature. If you change the if you change the temperature, you're going to change the number of charge carriers. And fundamentally, uh, we'll get to why this is later, um, but it has to do with the process itself, the thermal process of generation. So now we have expressions for the number of electrons and the number of holes per unit volume. We actually have some numbers uh, for the electron hole concentrations, and so we know how to calculate them. And in the next video, we're going to talk more about the Fermi energy, um, EF. And we're going to talk about uh, how this energy, EF, is modified by adding dopants to the, to the silicon lattice and how we can control the electron and the hole concentration by changing the Fermi energy and by adding additional atoms to the semiconductor.